this video, I'm going to teach you how to do the so and reach regression with R with a package called GLMNet. I will also show you an example of the so and reach regression reducing overfitting problem. First, let's generate some data. So here I set the seed first so that you can replicate whatever that I have done here. And I'm also going to upload this script in the description below so you can you know, download the script and run it if you want to. I generate a small sample so you can see that each of the variable only have 20 observations and I have nine variables. The ratio of the number of features versus the number of observations is 0.1. Four, five, that is considered quite big. So we call this type of regression high dimensional. As for the y or the response variable, it's a linear combination of x1 and x3, also a standard normal error term. Uh, so as you can imagine, when we run a regression of y against nine different variables, overfitting is bound to happen. First, let's run a linear regression with this data set. We use linear models results as a benchmark to compare with Lasso and Ridge regression. So in my previous video, I've already taught you how to do a linear regression in R. So basically, you just need to use uh, LM function and uh, use summary function to output the results. Let's run this chunk to get the data set. And then after getting the data set, we can run a linear regression. Here are the results. As you can see, for x3, the coefficient is not very close to the reality. In the actual model, it's negative 5, right? But what we have here is negative 1.29. And also, you have a bunch of coefficients for the other variables which are not included in the, this model. So you can confidently say that there is definitely some sort of overfitting in the linear model. So you may find it a little surprising here that the fitting is not that good or uh, the results is not that close to the actual model. This is because even though we have supplied the two x variables in the real model, which are x1 and x3, unfortunately, we have included a lot of irrelevant variables in this linear regression. So this linear model may capture a lot of noise from variables such as x2, x4, x5, all the way to x9. That's why the estimated coefficients are not that close to the real model. And we call this type of problem overfitting. Fortunately, Lasso can help us with reducing overfitting problem. So now I'm going to teach you how to do Lasso in R. In order to do R, we do need a library or a package called GLMNet. If you don't have that in your computer, you do need to go to Tools, then Install Packages, and then key in the name GLMNet. So yeah, it does prompt you with the package name and then you install it if you don't have it. But since I have it, I'm not going to install it in my computer again. Use the function library and include the name glmnet in order to import the library into this particular script. After importing the library, I actually call them combine all the x variables because for glmnet function, you do need to input your x as a matrix, not as separate x variables. After combining all the x variables into a matrix, you just need to key in your x, y here, and then you need to specify your argument alpha as 1, so as to do a lasso regression. For ridge regression, alpha is set as 0. And for family, you need to set the argument as Gaussian because your response variable is actually continuous and you are doing a regression here. So if your y variable is actually discrete and you are doing a classification, then your family should be set as some other values. For lambda, remember that lambda is actually a user-defined parameter in the formulation of Lasso. So yes, uh, here I set two distinct values for lambda. One is 0 0.2, the other is 2. As you can see, there are many arguments to be specified, and sometimes you may not be able to memorize that. So what you can do is to put a question mark here, then type the function name, all right? Then, as you can see, on the right down panel, you do have uh, the information with regard to this particular function, glmnet. You can take a look at the arguments here. So you do need to supply a x argument, a y argument. And for alpha, you can check 
the detail of the argument here. So for alpha, it, it is stated that uh, alpha equals to 1 is lasso and alpha equals to 0 is rich. So yeah, you don't have to memorize that, you just need to key in question mark GLM net. All right, just now I ran the code, so I do have the results here. As you can see, for lambda equals to 0 0.2, your coefficients for x2, x5, and x9 are all shrunk to 0. And for the rest of the irrelevant variables, namely x4, x6, x7, and x8, um, their coefficients are rather small in magnitude. For x3, the coefficient is still not very close to the actual model, which is negative 5, right? So you can't really say that this lasso result is better than the linear model just by looking at the coefficients. Later on, I'm going to introduce to you a different method to evaluate the performance of the prediction models, which can compare different models fairly. Let's look at another set of results. That's for lambda equals to 2, all right? My lambda is probably too big such that all the coefficients are shrunk to 0 except for x1. The x1's coefficient is quite far from the actual model, which is 10, right? This lambda value is probably too big, but later on I can evaluate this model with a method I, that I'm going to teach you. So now, let's move on to reach regression. So for reach regression, as I have mentioned just now, you just need to set alpha equals to 0. And here, I also tried two different lambda values, which are 0 0.5 and 10. Again, you can run this whole chunk of codes, and then you will see, even though when I set lambda as a very big value as 10, none of the coefficients are shrunk to 0, all right? This is a major difference between lasso and rich. For lasso regression, it shrinks some of the coefficients to 0, or at least it's possible for lasso to shrink certain coefficients to 0. And then in this case, those variables are eliminated from the model. So we can say that lasso actually selects variables for you. However, for reach regression, it never select variables for you since all the coefficients are not zero. So as I ju mentioned just now, I will teach you a method to compare different models fairly. This method is to compare the out-of-sample performance. So what do I mean by that? Since we do know about our uh, distributions for the x variables or the independent variables, and also we know the real model for y and how y is generated from x, we can do the simulation again. So here I set a different seed and I have a different number of observations. So here I only generate 10 observations. From these 10 observations, we are able to generate out of sample performance you can column combine all the independent variables as well as a column of ones. Why do we have a column of one? This is because we do have an intercept term, right, for each of the prediction models. So with x, which are the independent variables, you can multiply it to the coefficients estimated by each of the prediction model, get the prediction for each model, and then compute the difference between the prediction and y, square it, and take sum of it. So when you sum it up, you will get the sum of square of residuals, or in short, SSR. So you can get SSR for each of the prediction model for the new sample that you have just generated. All right, so here we can run the whole chunk, and we can output the SSR for each of the models. So as you can see, for linear model, the SSR is 15 point something, right? However, when we set uh, a small value of lambda for lasso and for ridge, you can see that their SSR are smaller. So we can say that they actually help with the overfitting problem because it, it generates a model that can better predict than the linear model. However, when lambda is too big, you can see that the SSR actually becomes worse. So it is very important for us to set a good value for lambda. In the next video, I'm going to teach you how to select a good lambda value.